Welcome to the first video that I am filming in my new studio space. Still got bits to play around with. The doors on this cupboard are the wrong color, but the new color will be coming soon. I don't know when, but that will be changing and maybe other things will be changing. It's all a big experiment. But one thing that I knew for sure was that in my new office slash studio space, I wanted some bookshelves, specifically bookshelves for my work books. And so that essentially to me means non-fiction, sex and relationships, feminism, bodies, books. And so what happened was I built these shelves and then I got all of my non-fiction sex books from home and populated the shelves with them. And then I was like, oh, these shelves are quite empty. And that's basically because I've been holding back. I have not been buying many books recently because I just filled up my shelves at home. But now I've got loads of space on here for my extensive TBR. <laughs> and I got space on my shelves back at home for my like leisure fiction reading books as well. So I have been very busy buying books <laughs> recently and I wanted to show you them. So I have, I think 20 books to show you. <laughs> What have I done? And essentially what I have done is I've physicalized my TBR. My TBR was previously digital. I use Storygraph, by the way, if you want to follow me there to follow what I'm reading and all of that stuff. And so I went on my Storygraph TBR, I filtered it to nonfiction, and I went through and thought, okay, what are my priorities? What are the things that I want to have on my shelf? And kind of be staring at me, like, read me, Hannah, read me. Why aren't you reading me yet? So I've just basically created just more of a pressure TBR because it's physically there instead of just in the digital space where I can ignore it. So I have 20 books. I've split them into five categories, but with the nature of the overarching category, all of these categories bleed into each other and there's books that would fit in multiple categories. But that being said, we have sex, relationships, LGBTQ+, feminism, which is also kind of being used as just miscellaneous, <laughs> and bodies. But currently the two bodies books that are in this category are just period books. So that's fun. So let's start. I'm just gonna grab one of these piles and see which one it is. So I'm just gonna go, Ooh. okay, we are actually starting with the period books, the period books. So this first one was actually gifted to me, um, be period positive, reframe your thinking and reshape the future of menstruation by Chella Quint. Chella is an amazing period activist, woman, knowledgeable person, like, Amazing. Um, she created the Be Period Positive Pledge, which organizations and schools can take. And I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in what that means. But I'm really excited for this book. It's literally just come out recently, I believe. And it's colorful and illustrations. The other period book, which has been on my TBR for a while, and I cannot believe that I have not read this yet, is Period Power by Maisie Hill. Harness your hormones and get your cycle working for you. I hear a lot of praise for this book and Maisie is just wonderful. It is a big one though. I wasn't expecting it to be so big. So TBR, the pressure of the physical TBR. Next. Oh, we have the relationships books. So first up we have In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. So I have her other book, which I also haven't read. <laughs> but I was recently book shopping with my friend Sana and she picked up this book and she seemed to have had it come highly recommended and was interested in reading it. And then I got jealous and so I picked it up myself as well. What I understand about it is that it's kind of like a memoir and it tells the story of when the author lived with her girlfriend. And I don't want to put words in the mouth because I've not read it yet, um, but I think it's like an abusive or toxic relationship situation. The blurb on the back just says, with a charismatic but volatile woman. So it kind of like documents this relationship. So I'm kind of interested in that. And it's meant to be very literary as well, like interestingly formatted. Next up, we have <laughs> Esther Perel's books. Oh my God, I love this woman. I've watched her TED Talks just like, on repeat so many times. Her podcast is also brilliant. And yet these have been on my TBR for years. And yet I have not read the two books that basically her TED Talks were based off. So Mating in Captivity, Unlocking Erotic Intelligence is the one that her first TED Talk is based on, which is about desire in long-term relationships and the state of affairs, rethinking infidelity is the one that her infidelity TED Talk is all about. I just wanna read these. Can we desire what we already have? 
Does good intimacy always make for hot sex? Very exciting. And finally, another classic that has been on my TBR for so long and also is a big one, wasn't expecting this, is The Ethical Slut. But essentially this book is all about ethical non-monogamy. And this is the third edition, updated and expanded by Janet W. Hardy and Dossie Easton. 200,000 copies sold. I know that there's lots of books about polyamory and ethical non-monogamy that have come out since this book, but because this book is just kind of like such a staple, it's just one that always comes up. I just, I wanted to start here. So those are the relationships books. Next we have, da -da -da -da. all right, it is my feminism miscellaneous pile. I actually don't really know what category these would be in. But we have Pleasure Activism, The Politics of Feeling Good, written and gathered by Adrienne Marie Brown. I have been looking for this book for so long. Not available on Waterstones, not available on bookshop.org, just like impossible to get a hold of. And then one day I was just browsing and gazed the word and there it was, there it was. The first line of the blurb says, how do we make social justice the most pleasurable human experience? How do we? I would like to know. That sounds fun. Ooh, there's pictures. Where do you learn stigma? Pussy power. Next up is Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. This looks like a fiction book. Doesn't it look like a fiction book? But it is nonfiction and the author basically spent like eight years with three different women just like following their lives and this is a story about them. And it is just highly recommended, highly reviewed, apparently great book. I don't know anything else about it. I'm going in very blind, um, but I quite like that about books sometimes. Next up is Sex and World Peace by Valerie M. Hudson, Bonnie Valif Spanville, Mary Caprioli, and Chad F. Emmett. And I believe that this was on my TBR because Emma Watson recommended it at some point. I might be wrong about that, but that is the vague memory that I have. And I'll also just read the first line of the blurb of this one. Sex and World Peace argues that the security of women is a vital factor in the overall security of the state and its incidents of conflict and war. Slightly out of my comfort zone, this book, but a good reason to read it. Next, over here, oh my God. Come on, you can do it, Hannah. LGBTQ plus books. So I have Trans Britain, Our Journey from the Shadows, edited by Christine Burns. This is a history of Trans Britain and I love me some sexual history. I did history at uni, so like history stuff. I have a whole like history section on my <laughs> bookshelves. Um, big fan. And this has been highly recommended and heard lots of good things about it. Can everyone please calm down? A guide to 21st century sexuality by Mae Martin. I adore Mae Martin. Their show Feel Good on Netflix. Watch it. So good. Um, and this is their YA book about sexuality. And I've always loved their insights into gender and sexuality and everything in their comedy. So excited to read this and we have the same publisher. Next is Gender Euphoria, Stories of Joy from Trans, Non-Binary and Intersex Writers, edited by Laura Kate Dale. I have no memory of how this ended up on my TBR, but when I saw it there, I was like, looks great. I will get that. Oh, this is published by Unbound. Unbound are like a um, crowd-funded publisher. I like them a lot. So yeah, I'm excited to dip into this. Next, we have The Spectrum of Sex, The Science of Male, Female and Intersex by Peter... Valoria and Maria Nieto, PhD. So I can't remember exactly how this ended up on my TBR. I think maybe Hida or Haida was a guest speaker in one of the webinars for my sexuality educator course that I did, or their name was mentioned during the intersex webinar. I cannot remember. But either way, I looked them up and this book appeared and I was like, yes, I would like to learn more about that. Next up, we have Untamed by Glennon Doyle. I've heard so many amazing things about this. Um, my friend Elena was reading it recently and essentially Glennon Doyle was married to a man and I believe had kids with him um, and then when she was older uh, fell in love with a woman and left her husband for this woman and it's all about what is it stop pleasing and start living. <laughs> it's all about her experience of that, sexuality um, and just being true to yourself, essentially. And then we have Top to Bottom, a memoir and personal guide through Phalloplasty by Finley Games. Finley is 
a member of our community, Finley, watches my videos and he actually reached out to me about um, his book. Um, he has a great YouTube channel as well where he talks all about being a trans man and like guides and his experiences with phalloplasty. And then this is his book that I believe is out now. Let me check. Oh, I don't know. It says 2021. At some point this year, it maybe is out, <laughs> maybe not yet, all about phalloplasty, his experience, um, and then also just like packed ton of information in here. So thank you, Finley. And then finally, the sex pile. Just sex. That's not true. Is there anything just about sex? So first up is Sex and Social Media by Katrin Tiedenberg and Emily van der Nagel. This was recommended to me by one of you because one of these people is your tutor at university. This is the vague memory I have around how this ended up on my TBR. And now I have it. So thank you for that recommendation. Sex and social media, two of the things that I spend most of my time thinking about and talking about. Another small red one, what is it about small red sex books? Love it. Is The Psychology of Sex, um, which is part of the Psychology of Everything series. And this is by Meg John Barker. I adore Meg John. They are a brilliant writer and thinker around all things sex and relationships. And I also interviewed them on my podcast doing it, I think for like season one as well. So yes, very excited for this. And I also know that someone in my Patreon in the common room was talking about reading this in the Discord server recently. And that's what prompted me to be like, okay, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it and read it. Next up, we have Boys and Sex, Young Men on Hookups, Love, Porn, Consent and Navigating the New Masculinity by Peggy Ornstein. This is the follow-up to a book that she did that was called Girls and Sex. I didn't buy that one, however, because I couldn't find the edition that essentially looked like this, and I wanted my copies to match. But I have the boys one, and at some point I will get the girls one too, I guess. But yes, lots of talk about masculinity at the moment, men being left out of the conversations and all of that, so I'm interested, I'm interested to hear what some young men think about sex. Next up we have Magnificent Sex. What is going on with this cover? What is this cover? I hate it. Lessons from Extraordinary Lovers by Peggy J. Kleinplatz and A. Dana Menard. I bought this book because Emily Nagoski recommended it. And so essentially, if you want to have a good sex life, you want to have better sex, they did some research essentially into looking at people who like, I guess, self-report having great sex and what are the factors in that and in their relationships and in their sex life. Um, so interesting. And finally, another one that's been on my TBR for so long is The Ultimate Guide to Sex and Disability for All of Us Who Live with Disabilities, Chronic Pain and Illness by Miriam Kaufman, Corey Silverberg and Fran Odette. Sex and disability is something that I've talked a lot more about over the last few years and interview people on my podcast about as well. And I just wanna see what's going on in here and just kind of like help build up that knowledge and understanding more. So that's it. I believe those are my 20 books. <laughs> I think it's 20. That I am now going to add back onto my bookshelf. Have you read any of these books already or are there any that are on your TBR? Or are there any that you're like, I can't be bothered reading it, but I hope Hannah does so she can tell us about it. Which one of those books is that? So then that can help me prioritize what to read. Thank you so much for watching and just a special thank you to my patrons. We are on the long and winding road to 1000 patrons and it just would not be possible for me to have this studio have this office space and like a separation of like work and home if it wasn't for them and i've just got lots of exciting things to come in this space and i'm so excited um to be working here it just like feels so cool even if i am all on my lonesome <laughs> and i absolutely love this space and i've loved just fixing it all up and getting all of the bits in. Um, so yeah, I hope that you like it too and I'll definitely show you some more corners of it in the future, but it's not quite there yet. If you want to see an empty studio tour, that's over on my More Hannah YouTube channel if you are interested in seeing what it was like before. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like and do all of that stuff and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.